Hello my friends, Mac here. In this video, I'm gonna be diving into our first few weeks of living with a cat on the road. I'm gonna go into how we prepared both the cat and our truck for her moving in, as well as kind of how things have been going, how she's adjusting, and what we do on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure she is living a happy and safe life out here on the road. At this stage, we are in no way experts of living on the road with a cat, but it's been going really well and she's been adjusting to the processes pretty quickly. So we thought we would share our experiences. But before we dive into all of that, I suppose you should meet our lady. Friends, meet Luna. Luna, meet our internet friends. <laughs> Luna is a 10 year old cat that came to us via a Craigslist ad in college. She's been with us ever since, but for the last three years, she's actually been living with Owen's parents while we were in smaller rigs that didn't really accommodate well for her. But now that we have a new rig, she is with us. Um, her list of likes are long naps, washboard roads for whatever reason, and her catnip banana. And her dislikes are tinfoil and the sound of breakfast being made. To prepare Luna for the road, we started a month or two out from our actual departure date. We did this so we could slowly introduce new things to her without overwhelming her with all the new things that were happening. So one of those things was Luna had actually never worn a collar before. So we purchased a new collar and we started to have her wearing it full time about a month out. We went with one that has a nameplate instead of anything that dangles because in our research we found that it's actually dangerous for your cat to wear a collar that makes noise because of the potential that it could attract some sort of predatory animal. A lot of people have asked us how we got Luna used to riding in the truck. We did this by starting again early and doing a couple of test drives. The first couple of trips that we took her on, we actually didn't bring her in the kennel in the cab. And we found that she was kind of acting nervous and looking for a place to hide. So after seeing that, we decided that we were gonna from now on ride with her with the kennel up in the cab so she had a safe place to retreat to if she felt like she needed it. Much like the collar, Luna had never really worn a harness or been on a leash before. We started early by just putting the harness on her and then letting her wear it around the house in an environment that she was comfortable in just to get used to how it felt. We also felt like it was nice to put separation between the traumatic event of putting the harness on and then graduating to outdoor adventures. We also found a place to install Luna's litter box within the camper, just so she would have a reliable place to do her business once we were on the road. The first week or so that we were on the road, we took things really slow. We never drove more than a few hours at a time before stopping and relaxing, just to make sure Luna wasn't being overwhelmed with all of the change. Luna always rides in the cab with us. When we first got on the road, she was inside of the kennel with the door closed, and of course the kennel was seat belted in. We did this because we wanted her to kind of get used to the flow of driving in the truck. As time went on, she seemed interested in coming out, so then we started to prop the door open so she could come and go whenever she felt comfortable. After about a week of that, we took the door off completely just to make sure the invitation was always there for her to walk around. Now she rides about 95% of the time in her kennel, usually passed out, but she does like to come out and say hello to us and see what's going on outside the window. Because Luna sees her kennel now as being a safe place, she's come to have a really good relationship with her kennel and always knows that it's a place that she can go back to if she feels like she needs some comforting. Typically, while we're driving, Luna is asleep, but there has been some instances where she started meowing and kind of roaming around the truck. We've come to know those as signs that she's either hungry, thirsty, or needs to go to the bathroom. So when that happens, we try to find a pit stop so she can head to the back of the camper and take care of whatever those needs are. Luna has always been an inside cat, but since going on the road, she has started to express an interest in venturing out. Uh, anytime that she is outside of the truck, she wears her soft papilla harness, as well as a 30 foot lead, so we can attach it to the outside of the truck and always keep an eye on her. 
We love having the opportunity to let her venture outside because it gives her extra exercise and engagement and she always sleeps really hard when she comes back in. To keep the smell down in the camper from Luna's business, I try to scoop it after every time she uses it. Luckily, she only seems to use it at night, so every morning I wake up and the first thing I do is I go out and scoop it. We have switched her over to using a fully biodegradable and flushable litter called the world's best litter. So far, it's been awesome. She seems to really like it, and it's good because we can dig a hole and bury it just like we would for our own bathroom needs. For Luna's food and water, we have a Go Pet Bento box. This little piece of pet gear is awesome because the top portion of the container is watertight. Every time we're moving, we like to close them up and then we don't have to worry about any sort of water spills. Luna has never really shown any sort of interest in eating or drinking while the car is moving, but as soon as we stop, we like to open them up, be it in the cab or in the camper, so she has the ability to eat or drink. Luna's food supply is kept in a Wilderdog compression sack, which makes it easy for stashing the rest of her food supply. The first night that Luna actually spent in the camper with us was a few days before leaving. It was actually kind of a rough night because she spent most of the night pacing, meowing, looking out the window, and it felt like standing on our heads most of the night. We wanted to be sure that she had a day or two to then go back into the house to get comfortable before we ended up leaving. Now that some time has passed, Luna has worked into a more comfortable evening schedule. She typically sleeps throughout the night in various locations around the camper until about 4 or 5 a.m which she then parkours off of every surface, but it doesn't typically bother us too much. Having a cat in a small space means there's a lot of hair to be dealt with. We try to head all of this off by brushing her every day, and it also kind of knocks off anything that she might track in from outside. But the thing is, Luna's a long-haired cat, so no matter what we do, she's honestly still gonna shed. Our second line of defense against all of the shedding is a Dyson car and boat vacuum. This thing is great because it can charge off of 12 volt and comes with a whole litany of attachments, but we only kept two that we felt like were best for our space. We do a little bit of vacuuming or sweeping just about every day. And because we do that, it typically is not that long of a process. Cats like to have a place that they can retreat to if they're ever feeling scared or a panic room of sorts. Luna seems to have three go-to options in our camper that she likes to gravitate between. During breakfast, which she really seems to hate, she likes to hide underneath the covers of our bed. During thunderstorms, she seems to like to hide in her litter box. And other times where she just kind of wants a quiet place to retreat to, she likes to go into our doorless kennel, which we do move from the cab when we stop to camp at night. In our time on the road already with Luna, we've come to find there's a bunch of different scenarios where Luna needs to be left behind for a variety amounts of time without us. In all of those instances, Luna is back here in the camper with the top down, just because we can better regulate the temperature when it's a smaller space. We like to leave Luna back here also because she has access to her food, her water, her toys, a bunch of different surfaces that she likes to sleep on, and her litter box. Depending on what the weather is like, we'll open an assortment of vents to make sure that she has plenty of fresh air to keep her cool while we're gone. Going forward, we'll likely be traveling in places that are cooler than we have in the past, just because we wanna make sure that we're staying in environments where Luna can stay comfortable in the event that she needs to be left behind in the camper. I feel like I need to stress that if we are ever in question or in doubt whether or not she's going to be okay when we leave her, we will not leave her. We want to make sure that Luna is leading a very healthy and happy life out here, and we would never put her in any sort of danger. That just about wraps up life with Luna thus far. We have so much that we still need to learn as a family, but we've been so impressed with her progress thus far. I think letting her do things at her own pace and introducing things really slowly over time has been the key to her success. But we're just so excited that she seems to be happy and adjusting well to her new life out here. If you are interested in taking a cat on the road that is not used to it, I think that we would recommend a similar approach. 
The only thing is that you gotta remember is every cat is different and you just kinda need to hear them out and let them do things at their own pace. For all the gear that we've mentioned in this video, head into the description below because we have them all linked and waiting for you. If you have any personal success stories in taking a cat on the road or any tips or strategies, we are all ears because like I said, we're still learning. But thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys down the road.